Hey guys, let's get more news about Steelers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Report, RB Jalen Warren to miss multiple weeks with hamstring injury, week one status in question. The Pittsburgh Steelers are certain to be without O.L. Nate Herbig for their regular season opener against the Atlanta Falcons. And it looks like a coin flip if R.B. Jalen Warren will be on the field, either. Warren suffered a hamstring injury in yesterday's game against the Buffalo Bills. Per NFL Network's Tom Pelissero, Warren will miss multiple weeks and isn't guaranteed to play Week 1. Warren will be out multiple weeks due to a hamstring injury sustained Saturday, and his status for the season opener is up in the air, NFL Network insider Tom Pelissero reported Sunday, wrote NFL.com's Grant Gordon. Appearing on NFL Game Day, Pelissero said the Steelers are optimistic about Warren returning ahead of the September 8 opener but his chances are up in the air. My understanding is he did undergo testing here, Pelissero said. The current expectation is that Jalen Warren will miss multiple weeks and his status for week one against the Falcons right now is up in the air. All in all, this is not the worst case by any stretch for Jalen Warren. Not ideal to have a soft tissue injury this time of year, but considering he got hurt in the second preseason game, they are hopeful he's going to be back out on the field sooner than later. Warren and Najee Harris make for one of the NFL's best tandems and also one of the most durable. Since Warren entered the league in 2022, he's missed just one game and appeared in all 17 last season. Warren carried the ball 149 times for 784 yards and four rushing scores in 2023 while finishing second on the Steelers with 61 receptions. Warren finished Saturday's game with one rushing attempt for one yard along with two receptions for 14 yards as Pittsburgh's offense struggled to sustain drives throughout the game. The team initially labeled him as doubtful to return and now will hope to get him back for the start of the regular season. If Jalen Warren can't return in time, Najee Harris will have a prominent role in the Steelers' backfield and should see most of the carries as opposed to the 60-40 split between the two that existed throughout last season. Veteran Corderell Patterson, who missed most of training camp with his own hamstring injury, could see additional work. Patterson returned healthy for the end of camp and played against the Bills, recording one carry and one reception. Veteran RB Jonathan Ward, who impressed during training camp, also has a hamstring injury suffered during the final day of training camp. He did not play yesterday. Other options towards the end of the Steelers' running back depth chart are La Michael Perrine, Aaron Shamplin, and Di June Edwards. Pittsburgh could make a roster move to add depth for the final week of the preseason. They worked out rookie RB Jaden Sheridan earlier this week perspective of an average Steelers fan, we gotta get out of this place. I came into this game looking forward to seeing Russell Wilson quarterbacking the team. Last week, Arthur Smith's offense displayed play-action passes and some strong running. I wanted to see how the offense looked with Wilson behind center. I missed attending another game. My tickets went to my college buddy Ron Harkins and his wife Nancy. Ron played tight end for Blackhawk High School outside Beaver Falls back in the 1970s. It was fun exchanging texts with him during the game. The local D.C. stations picked up the Steelers game since the Commanders and Ravens were in different time slots. One warning from last week. If you ever set up a temporary account to watch a game, make sure to cancel the subscription immediately after the game. Fubo wanted to charge me $302.40 for three months since I did not cancel until Saturday morning. We sorted it out. But they make it very difficult to unsubscribe with multiple steps to get rid of it. In any case, I had Steelers Nation radio on my phone, the game live on the television, and a streamed version that was about 30 seconds behind the live feed so that I could see some replays. My son Nicholas came upstairs to see what all the cacophony was about and just shook his head. Standing in front of the television with a terrible towel draped over one shoulder, holding a blaring phone with Craig Wolfley describing the play that Charlie Batch and Bob Pompiani had just described seconds before. 
and the same play coming up on my laptop streaming the game. Russell Wilson played almost the entire first half. Unfortunately, he failed to move the ball effectively, but it is hard to evaluate his performance too harshly. The offensive line played abysmally. Broderick Jones looked very weak, getting tossed aside like a ragdoll as a defender sacked Wilson. Justin Fields came in for the last drive of the half. His ability to avoid the rush and scramble for yardage led to the Steelers' only points of the game on a Chris Boswell field goal. Fields' athleticism does bring a dynamic to the Steelers' offense. But he cannot do it all himself. Report, Steelers willing to send two indeed dash third-round picks to 49ers for Brandon Ayuk. On this episode of As the Brandon Ayuk Turns, we learn that the Pittsburgh Steelers offered the San Francisco 49ers second and third-round draft picks in order to trade for the disgruntled dish wide receiver. That is pretty notable, considering that is reportedly what the 49ers were looking for. Matt Miyako reported a week and a half ago that the Steelers were unwilling to meet the 49ers' trade demands. More specifically, he wrote, as much as the Steelers might want Ayuk, they have been unwilling to provide the 49ers with their asking price of draft picks that include second- and third-round selections. But now, according to Mike Silver of the San Francisco Chronicle, the Steelers are willing to meet that demand. The only problem is the 49ers still want a player, and they aren't having any luck. Silver writes that they hope to parlay one of those draft picks for a wide receiver from another team. Much to their chagrin, they are not finding any willing partners. Things are starting to add up now. Previously, we wrote about a report that the Steelers and 49ers have a deal in place in principle for Brandon Ayuk. Perhaps all the 49ers were waiting for to pull the trigger was to find that second willing trading partner. Reports referenced a three-team trade with one team sending the 49ers a receiver, but they can do a separate trade. Barring the 49ers handing Brandon Ayak the contract he wants, or Ayak caving, there is no obvious resolution timeline. The problem with any trade scenario is that there are multiple dominoes lined up that have to hit right. Ayuk squashed multiple potential trades to the Browns and Patriots because he didn't want to play there. But the 49ers were ready to pull the trigger, and those teams offered Ayuk more money than the Steelers. Meanwhile, the 49ers reopened discussions with Ayuk on a potential extension. Yet here we are, and they haven't taken this to the finish line. There is supposedly one final detail about the last year of his contract, but that doesn't mean San Francisco caves. And it doesn't mean that Ayuk simply says, OK, I've got enough. Perhaps the only thing blocking the Pittsburgh Steelers from Brandon Ayuk is the 49ers' struggle to find that new receiver. The Steelers only have one receiver worth trading, and they're obviously not parting with George Pickens. One report even suggests that they would still view Pickens at their top receiver if they landed Ayuk. As the clock ticks, the pendulum has seemingly swung in the direction of Ayuk remaining with the 49ers rather than coming to the Steelers. But with more time passing, it can always swing back the other way. This could drag on into the regular season, all the way to the trade deadline, or it can end today. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Brandon AIYUK? Leave your opinion in the comments.